Corinthians chapter 2 for a few minutes here. If you allow me, and we're just having a great time, and uh, we're going to have a great service tonight, and uh, we're, just, we're just having a great church. I just uh, I appreciate what the Lord is doing in this assembly. Amen. God is great. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Brother Mooney, if you would, please, sir, and I'm going to read through verse 5. Verse 1 through 5. And I, brethren, this uh, Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Corinth. He said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. But now he was educated. This man was educated, very educated. He was, ra- he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He could quote the first five books of the law word for word. And he was a member of the Sanhedrin court. He was raised at the feet of one of the greatest men there was of that day, Gamal, if I'm pronouncing his name right. So he was educated. But he said that I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you t- the testimony of God, for I have determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with excellence, excellence, excellence uh, enticing, thank you, words of men's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. There was a reason for it. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. And I want to couple that with one verse from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 8. Most students in the Sunday school can quote it. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Lord give me strength. I'm going to preach a few minutes on this same Jesus. Lift your hands to him. Surround Thank you, Lord. Me, oh thank you, Jesus. Lord, Father, we thank you today. Surround me, oh thank you, Jesus. God bless today. Bless your children. Surround Fill us with me, that, that you would have oh in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you, Lord. Everybody say amen. You can be seated. God bless you. I'm going to preach on the sa- this same Jesus. Sister Creasy, I thought, done a great job baking us a cake. Now I'm going to put a little icing on that cake, if, the God, if God will help me. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What that means is he's never changed. From the time he came, matter of fact, he never came, from, he changed from the creation till now. He's never changed. I want you to stop, if you would, and think about it, dwell on that just for a minute, that Jesus is the same always as he always was. He's never changed. He has not changed. He will not change. Jesus is is just as real today. Many people have got him on a shelf somewhere. You know, he'll do when we need him type. Or we'll, we'll use him if we get in a tight spot. Things of that sort. But the Bible teaches us that he's just as real today in every way as he ever was. He's just as powerful today. He's not lost any of his power. He's as powerful today as he ever was. And we know his power. We read about it. He can do anything today that he could do in that day as he ever could, ever was able to do. He can do it today. There's nothing that's impossible with him. He's just as able to meet your needs today as he was any every other day. In the, in the time gone, time past. He's still just as ready to supply your needs as he ever was. He's just the same Jesus. He can still mend the brokenhearted. He can still set the captives free. He can still speak peace to the soul as he ever could. He's still God. Is anybody listening to me? 
I came today with a short, simple little thought, just as simple as I knew how to put it. I want to preach that Jesus is the same, that same Jesus. When you talk about things that happened in the Old Testament and, the, and in the New Testament, I'm preaching about the same Jesus. He's not a new God. He's not a different God. He's the same. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, Acts 1 and 11, why stand ye gazing into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come, uh, so, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He's not sending someone else. He's not going to send some, an angel. When, when that time comes, when the rapture takes place, the catching away, whatever you want to call it, when it happens, the same Jesus that walked the shores of Galilee and that walked the waves of Galilee. My wife talked about him getting out, or Peter getting out of that boat and met Jesus out on the water. That same Jesus. It's not going to be a different one. It's not going to be a, a different spirit. It's not going to be a, a different angel. It's going to be the same Jesus. The Bible said in Acts 1 11, the same Jesus is going to come again in like manner as you see him go away. The same Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, will return and catch his church, his waiting bride, away. It's the same one. A lot of things have changed in our life. I've seen a lot of changes, and, and many of you have saw just as many or maybe even more than I have because some that's older than me, not very many, but there are maybe one or two that's been older than I am that has seen a little more than I have. But I've seen a lot of changes take place uh, in this old world. Man, I, I remember when you'd have to wait uh, uh, no telling how long just to make a pot of coffee. But you don't have to do that anymore. I remember when there was no microwave. I remember when we got our first microwave oven. Do you remember that? Man, we thought we done went to heaven. We ate baked potatoes and chili for a week. Remember that, Rebecca? You remember that? Church got us a microwave oven for Christmas one year or birthday or something. I think it was Christmas. And, and we, we had to read all about it. We had to read the directions to find out how to work this crazy thing. And, and man, when we got it working, man, the potato, the potato barrel didn't have a chance. We started, we started cooking potatoes and, and putting chili on them. And, and then we found out you could put cheese on them. And, and man, you just do all kinds of, well, we've seen changes since then. We've seen a lot of changes. Thousands of years have passed by since the Lord was walking on this earth. Thousands of years have passed since he stepped out and quoted, let there be light, and there was light. Kingdoms have changed. Times have changed. We're not living in the same day. And I can't say all of the changes were good by any means, but times have changed. A di different situation. Society has changed. Governments have changed. And I know that's not to the better. So governments have changed. Our laws have changed. But Jesus Christ is the one who's never, ever changed. I had a man at Yellow Creek Nuclear Plant. When I welded over there, he, he's, he's this good guy. I almost said what call what he was, but I, I you wouldn't want to hear it. Uh, he, he he said told me one day he said he said I, I I'm not going to pay tithes. I said well you think I care? You don't take no food off my table because you don't pay tithes. That's going to hurt you. He said well you know he began to make all these excuses. I said well, let me tell you something while we're on that subject. Let me tell you that tithing is the only thing in the world that I can think outside of Jesus has never changed. All kinds of prices change. Can't buy potatoes like you used to. Can't go to the market and buy a loaf of bread like you used to. Number one, you got two aisles of bread <laughs> that you got to make a, a decision on. And then you got to pay an arm and a leg for a loaf of bread and half the time it's already out of date. Times has changed. But the only thing that hasn't changed, 10% is still 10%. If you make $1,000 a week or if you make $100 a week, tithing is 10%. It's not went up 
to 15. It's not went down to 5. It's 10% of your earnings belong to God. And, and, and you'll never change that. And you may never give a nickel to see an ant eat a bell of hay. You may never put any money in the pan. That's your business. That's between you and God. But the fact remains that tithing has never changed. The fact remains government changes. The prices of your food. I, I remember buying gas for 30 cents a gallon. Well, you won't buy gas for 30 cents a gallon now. Times has changed. Different situations. But Jesus Christ has never changed. He's the great I am. He's the Father. He's the Son. And He's the Holy Ghost. Are you honest? He's the power of the church. Without Jesus, there is no church. And that, my friend, will never change. Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. I heard you say it in the Sunday school lesson. He's the God who spoke everything that is into existence by his power, by the power of his word alone. His word was all it took to form the galaxies, the birth of the universe, the array of the heavens and the splendors of, uh, that adorned the earth with her wonders. It was his word that spoke. He spoke the word and it was done. He has not changed. He's still the same. Everything that was made was made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and in him we live and we move and we have our being and he is all power in heaven and in earth. Nothing will ever change it. We can pass all kinds of laws. We can pass bylaws, and we can do all kinds of things. We can set up a copy of bylaws, which we're doing here in the church, and we can put just about anything you want to in the bylaws, and it'll stand for the church. But Jesus Christ will never change. We'll never change his mind. We'll never change his power. We'll never change his authority. He never changes. I called one of our elders of our organization was asking, asking them about a situation that we was thinking about in our bylaws. And I said, does this, does this do such and such and so and so? He said, either do whatever you put down. He said, if you don't want it to do this, don't put it in there. If you want it to do this, put it in there. It never changes once it's a bylaw. Are you listening to me? But Jesus Christ, Paul said, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you want the Holy Ghost, you've got to go through Jesus Christ. If you want to get water baptized, you've got to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you understanding? He never changes. The message that I'm preaching never changes. I may change. I may compromise. I may go over the falls in a rowboat. But I'm telling you, the message will never change. Jesus Christ is the same. Hallelujah. He opened Sarah's barren womb and brought life out of death. He's the God who produced hope when there was only despair. He's the God that turned weeping into rejoicing. And he never changes. Are you understanding who he is? By the power of his promise, he multiplied his people during 400 years of oppression. They marched into Egypt 70 strong. They marched out a great and mighty nation. He never changes. You want the blessings of God, get him on your side. If you want God's blessings, if you want your family blessed, get in the boat with Jesus Christ. Is anybody, and that same Jesus, that same Jesus that did all of this, I'm preaching about him, and he's in this building. He never changes. He's right here with us today. He's reaching for families. He's reaching for souls. He's the God that spoke from a burning bush who called Moses on the backside of a desert. He's the same God. He's in this building this morning. Are you understanding? I want to drive this with a hammer. I want to tell you, he's the God who asked Moses, what is that you got in your hand? Moses said, it's just a rod. Where's my rod? Where's my rod? Here's my rod. It's just a rod. I thought Moses answered the question. It's just a rod. It could have been nasty. It could have been scarred. It could have been stained from mud and, and dirty water. It could have had all kinds of things on it. He could have had uh, cut places in it where he, maybe he dropped it on the, on the rocks and, and, and scratched it up. He said, it's just a rod. It, it, it's nothing special, Lord. It's just a rod. You know what God told him? He said, throw it down. And, and Moses throwed it down. It became a serpent. And everybody might have jumped back from it, but then God spoke and the serpent became a rod again. 
Then he spoke to Moses. He said, he, he got his hand. He spoke, and, and Moses' hand turned lepers. It was eat with leprosy, and he spoke again, and his hand was clean again. I'm telling you, that same Jesus is in this building today. He does miracles. He does miracles. Let me tell you, Jesus, I, I believe if uh, Moses was saying, when he said it's just a rod, I believe Moses was saying, it ain't nothing to it. It's not much. But God was saying, you just give me what you got. See, I don't have nothing. I'm just an old poor rich man. You understand? I'm a poor rich man. I don't have a lot of money, but I got treasures in heaven. When I leave here, I'm going there. When I leave Holly Grove down here, I'm out of here. I, I don't have nothing to offer. I give my tithes. I give what little bit I can. I do my best I can, but I don't have a lot to offer. But if I take what little bit of dabble stuff I do have, I, I'm not a good preacher. I never claim to be a good preacher. I ain't got no clue why God sent me to cover that. I ain't got a clue. Unless some of you are sitting here on this pews today, that's the only thing I can think of why I came to cover that anyway. Oh, you understand? I don't have a talent. I don't have education. I sure don't have looks, but I can take it. If I'll take what I got and give it. Well, you're not know, understand. If I can take what I got and give it, it'll be like that. It'll be like that rod that Moses had. It might have been an ugly rod. It may not. It may not have had a whole lot of beauty about it. But but God. He gave that, he gave that uh, rod to, to God, and God turned it into a serpent. Are you understanding? And then God, if you want a miracle, anybody need a miracle? Give God what you got. Just give him what you got. When we give God what we got, we get a miracle. When I give, if I can surrender, if I ain't got nothing but, oh, but, but old brother John, if, I, if that's all I got, and, and old wore out brother Creasy, old limping brother Creasy, uh, old foot hurting, ankle hurting, uh, knee hurting brother Creasy. My wife told me this morning, said, you're limping again. I said, big deal. I know I'm limping, but I'm going to give it to God. You know what I'm going to do, Ernesto? I'm just going to keep limping. I'm just going to keep walking. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to, I'm going to climb a ladder, and I'm going to fix that light bulb. I'm going to get some kind of ladder up and fix that before the painter messed it up. I'm, I'm going to do You know why? Because I'm going to give God everything I got. Amen. What are you going to do if you fall? I'm going to hit the bottom. That's what I'm going to do if I fall. I'm going to hit. Fall ain't going to hurt me. That sudden stop might mess with me. Are you understanding? I'm just going to give him what I got. If I'll give God what I got, I'll get a miracle. Well, I need a miracle today. How about you? If I can give God what I got, I want you to know that same Jesus that did all that is in this house today. He's walking these aisles. If you will surrender yourself, if you ain't got a nickel, couldn't rub two nickels together. If you'll just surrender yourself, God, it's I, Lord. Here I am. Don't know what in the world's going on, but here I am. You'll get your, if you'll forget the past, forget all your failures, forget all the times you came to the altar and it didn't work. Forget the times. And I've had people stand and tell me, I'm never going to go back. I'm never going to, and I ain't seen them since. You got to forget that. You got to forget all the times you failed God. You got to forget all the times you put your foot in your mouth and said something you couldn't do. You got to forget your past. You got to give God what you got. Get, all I got's me, Lord. This is just me, just old, old plow boy from Cotton Lake Bottom. But if I give everything to God, I'll get a miracle. Hallelujah. God took the voice of Moses and made a mouthpiece for God. Man, it couldn't even talk. At least I can talk. I may be country, but I can talk. But I'm in the country, so why not? And uh, the same Jesus that did all this is in the house today. Same one. He's the one who sent the plagues in Egypt. He's the one who called a nation of slaves or caused a nation of slaves to become the wealthiest nation in the world. He's the one who parted the Red Sea and buried Pharaoh's army in that sea. He's the same one. He's the one who turned the bitter spring sweet and caused manna to fall from heaven and made water flow out of a rock. And that same Jesus is in this place today. 
to supply your every need. He's the one who tore down the walls of Jericho, who made the sun stand still long enough for Joshua and Israel to win the victory. Is anybody understanding that I'm preaching about that same Jesus in this building today? That same Jesus that turned the water to wine. That same Jesus that cast out devils. That same Jesus that healed the blinded eyes. That same Jesus that healed the lame legs. That same Jesus that saved us. Hallelujah. He's in the house. Hallelujah. He's the God of both Testaments. He's the God of the Old Testament. My wife made that very plain in, in the Sunday school lesson. The Ancient of Days was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger at Bethlehem. Angels sang, shepherds rejoiced, and wise men journeyed from afar to see him. He astonished the doctors of the law and the lawyers at the temple. That same Jesus is in the house here today. He turned the water into wine, and though at the wedding feast of Cana of Galilee, he's the one who opened the blinded eyes, who unstopped the deaf ears. He's the one who caused the lame to leap. He's the one who stopped the funeral procession and caused the dead to live again. That same Jesus is in his house today. Somebody ought to lift your hands and bless his name. That's that same Jesus. Now, I don't know what you need. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going to face tomorrow. I have no idea. But I, and I don't know your struggle. I don't know your spiritual struggle. I don't know your literal struggle. I don't know if you're struggling with your finances. I don't know if you're struggling with your marriage. I don't know if you're struggling on your job. I don't know nothing about you except who you are. I know your face, and I know most of you's lives. I, I know more about you than you think I do. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I know the God who we serve. His name is Jesus. And he's in the house. This same Jesus that caused Peter to walk on the water that you talked about. He's the same one. This same Jesus that fed 5,000. And the same Jesus that spoke to a storm and peace came. He's in the house today. He's the same Jesus. He's never changed. He doesn't back up. What we need is a revival, a refreshing, a need of a, of the, of a move of God, a need of Almighty God to speak peace in this place. I'm not talking about the church on the hill. I'm not talking about the church in the valley. I'm talking about the United Pentecostal Church in Covington. We need revival. We need a, we're having a great move of God. We're having people being baptized. I thank God for that. But what we need is more, more, more. Put it on the screen, Brother Mooney. More, more, more in 24. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. What we need to, uh, there's too many people dying. There's too many people backsliding. There's too many people hurting. There's too many people desperate. We got to have, we can't have business as usual. Thank God for our pizza parties. Thank God for our meals. Thank God for the, the things in the Sunday school. Thank God for it. But what we need, we can't have church as usual. It's got to change. Hallelujah. The world needs an answer. The world's hurting. You'd be surprised that people around you, they're hurting. Souls are hurting. Spirits. Confusion. Don't know what to do. Don't, don't know which end stuck up. Like the boy standing at the refrigerator with it open. Don't know if he's take, taking something out or putting something in. Don't have a clue. The world's hurting. We need a revival. This world needs an answer. We need a source of hope. They need a safe haven. They need a shelter from the storms of life. They need Jesus, and he's in this house today. Hallelujah. We are the church. We are that church this world needs. We are the rock in the middle of a stormy sea of life. We are that church. Let me tell you what we need. We need more of Jesus. Long story short, just to get to that, we need more of Jesus. He is the answer to what we need. He's the answer, and he's not changed. He's the same. We need Jesus to flow through this place, to ener energize this church, this assembly. You're not backslid.
I'm almost sure you're not. If you was, you wouldn't be here today. But thank God what we need is a greater move of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is more than enough. You sang the song, Sister Creasy. He's more than enough. I'm sitting back here thinking, she's going to sing my sermon. He's more than enough to meet every need. He's more than enough to overcome every obstacle in your life. We need more of Jesus. We need the working power of Jesus. We need Jesus to do in this assembly what only Jesus can do. We need a move of God. What we need is for Jesus, who is the same, fill this house with his glory to move in this church. I'm not talking about other churches. I'm talking about this one in his power. What we need is Jesus, the miracle worker, the way maker, the problem solver, the answer to every situation, the one who can do anything, Jesus, the Savior. He's in the house, y'all. If you need him, he's here. He come to supply your need. He come to supply your need. The same Jesus that healed the wounded spirits, the same Jesus that mended the broken hearts, the same Jesus that set captives free, is in this house today. Whoa. I'm just going to give him everything I got. I'm going to give him everything I got. I'm going to give him my checkbook. I'm, I'm going to give him. It's his. What, what, if I got anything, and if I got a little, I got a little dabble of money in, in the bank, I could probably live a week or two, uh, but I'm, I'm just going to give it to him. Lord, it's yours. What do you want to do with it? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going on a limb today. I'm going out on a limb today. I'm telling you, if we'll give God what we've got, He'll give you a miracle Amen. in the name of Jesus. He did it for Moses. He did it for others. He'll do it for you. The same Jesus. He's Jehovah God of the Old Testament. Yes, he is. I'm just going to go on record. I'm just going to go way out, John, because I'm preaching all over the world anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, ladies and gentlemen, honey bun, I'm going to tell you, there is no such thing as a triune Godhead. It don't exist. There is not a three God, but Godhead. Hear, O Israel, the, lame of the Lord our God is one. There's only one God. His name is Jesus. He's Jehovah God of the Old Testament. He's the sacrificial lamb of the New Testament. He's the comforter. He's the Holy Ghost that was poured out upon the church on the day of Pentecost. You can feed, now you can do a lot of things. We got some good talent here. We got good singers. We got good workers. We got people that are, are putting things together on the computer. And, and, every, and that's super 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 but that ain't what we need I'm just going to be I'm an old goat see I come from that old school I, I, come, I can't even hardly type on a computer notes because I'm, I'm from that old school I, I, I just think you're supposed to use a pencil and a piece of paper see these guys that use these and that's okay that's okay I'm, I'm not complaining I'm not, I'm not being what I use these uh, iPads you know they lose their place I don't lose my place I just keep it laying right in front of me, see. So I'm there. I'm there. I thank God for change. I thank God. I thank God that we have these praise singers. I thank God for you older, older people that sing special songs. Sister Noah, Sister King, and others that sing so beautiful, those old time songs. I thank God for it. And I'm going to tell you, you can be a, you can you can fill the church with talent. We've got it. You can fill it with talent. You can fill the church with men's ideas. I guess this pizza party and, and his TNT and all, that's man's idea, I guess. I never found it in Scripture. There's nothing wrong with it. That's man's idea. And it's good. It's working. God, the fellowship is working, y'all. It's really working. And, and we can fill it with carnal ability. Uh, so I, if that's not carnal, I'd like to know what is. Uh, we can fill it with carnal ability. And I thank God for that. It's not about that uh, what we can feel with our men's ideas. We have beautiful singing. We have good singing. I praise singers. They do a great job. But this is not about what kind of music you have. This is not about kind of what style of music. Some say, well, I don't like that style of music. And others say, well, I don't like that country music. Y'all sing it. I don't like that. I don't like that. To be honest with you, I don't really care what you like. It ain't about what you like or what I don't like. It's about him. I'm a cantankerous old booger sometimes. I know, I know. But I'm right. We get too wrapped up in what we think we can do. 
If we sing this song, it's going to do this. If we sing, no, no, no. If we give God what we got, it's going to do this. You, you can sing like a feeling. But you can, you got to give God your, your all in all. You got to, you got to, you got to do that. You got, you got, got to do that. It's about, it's not about how good pastor can preach. It's not, it's not about how good I can, I can make you laugh. It's not, that's not it. It's about Jesus. It's all about Him. The same Jesus. It's about the power of the Holy Ghost. That needs to be moving in our churches. This, this church is going to be, impact our city. Listen to me, preachers. If we're going to impact this city, it's not going to be our music that does it. It's going to be the power of the Holy Ghost. It's what's going to impact our city. Zechariah 4 and 6, Brother Mooney said, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We've got to have the Holy Ghost moving. We're having Holy Ghost moves. Please don't misunderstand my point. But we can always use a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Somebody seek God for an answer. What happened to the George Washingtons and the Thomas Jeffersons and the, all those great men of God, that, uh, men of our country, that led our country into battle after, after the prayer meeting? After they seeking God, come on up to the piano, Rebecca, if you would. Where are they today? Where's our leaders that ain't ashamed to pray? Where's our leaders that say, you know what? Listen to me. Listen to me. And, I, and I'm fishing to let you go home. I, I, I'm not going to get on overtime today. Uh, we, we got a country right now that is a lion's den for Christians. It's a lion's den for Christians. Our leaders don't like us. They want our money on April the 15th, but they don't like us. Our world is a den of lions for the church. Just waiting to, to tear into us. Are you understanding? I like what Daniel said, young preacher. Lion's den or no lion's den. I'm going to pray anyway. I'm just going to keep praying. Let, let, let me say this to this beautiful church. You're beautiful people. This be, y'all are good to me. You're good to this pastor. Thank you so much for all that you've done through the years. But let me give you something here quickly. It don't matter what the lion's den says. This church is going to pray anyway. We're going to stand anyway. We're going to stand for truth. By the truth. Sell it not, the scripture said. So, in time, it, it's time, it's time, it's time to see Jesus. He's the same today as he was in that day. Let's have faith. Let our faith rise up. Jesus can and he will. If I'll give him all I got. I don't think he'll play second fiddle. I can't give him what's left over. That's like trying to pay tithes after you paid all your bills and all your house rent and bought your groceries and put little Johnny in private school and bought all the... No, no, no. That's like Jesus don't take leftovers. It's got to be top. Top. First fruits. Thank you. I was trying to think of that word I was trying to think of. First fruits. I ain't preaching tithing today. This church tithes. If you don't tithe, then you, you talk to God about it. But this church gives. This church gives. I'm not preaching that. I'm not trying to get your money. I'm not after your money. I'm just after your dedication. That's all I'm after. And I pray right now that same Jesus is in this house. Jesus can and he will. He'll multiply it. He takes my 90% and blesses more than 100%. He does. I'm not just saying. I'm not just blowing smoke. I pay tithes too. Everything I get, I tithe it. I hear in this church. Oh, you understand it? But he takes that 90% that I have left over, and it's, it uses it as if it was 100%. Give. It shall be given. Good measure. Press down and shake it over. Will he give? Say it. Hold it for me, Sister Christian. Shake it down and run it over. Shall he give? If you want something from God, you give God something. 
You don't have to give him. I ain't talking about your money. You give him your life. If you want God, you give him your life. You want God to bless. Hey, you want God to bless your marriage? You want God to bless your marriage? Give him everything you got. Surrender everything to him. Stand with me. You just give God everything. Don't be shy. Don't back, be backward. Don't back up. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to back up. Don't back up. God bless. Just give it to God. Bring whatever it is you need. Bring it to God right now. Come on around these front. Bring it to God. Just bring it over to God. Touch it. Touch it. 